This is the um, FFL Sky's the Limit call and want to thank everyone for joining. You know, um, our great guest today, uh, Mrs. Uh, Vivian Vial. Um, well, I apologize. I, I always. It's, it's actually Vial. Vial, okay. Right. I, I, I always mess myself up. I'm like, am I saying it right? You know? <laughs> Um, but, you know, always great to spend time with you and, and learn from you, you know, all the, the great things that you're doing, you know, with your, your agency and um, pr producing at a very high level, building at a very high level. Um, so always a pleasure to have you on, on the call. And so, um, you know, just getting right to it. I, mean, I know, you know, just let you let you do your thing. Um, you know, I know, Stephen, you know, we, we talk about, you know, what you're able to um accomplished you know last last year when when you were you know um still pregnant and and was not making excuses just out producing um you know at that time and and then even since you know uh having you know ha having a baby you know you, you've turned it up even to another level um hall of fame producer um you know helping over you know 400 you know 400 families you know last year and and like you said and also building building your agency at this time so i'm just going to let you kind of take the reins this morning and I'm, i know i don't have to say a whole lot you know anything that that you would like to you know share with the team you know definitely first of all you know you know let us know a little bit about your background you know um how, you know what did you do before ffl you know how did you get here to ffl and then we'll kind of jump right into it from there yeah, of course. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me, guys. It's an honor being here with you this morning. Uh, yeah, I'm Vivian Vile. Uh, I, um, uh, Adrian and I, my husband and I, we own FFL Adia. Uh, we're based out of Miami, and we've been with FFL for about uh, a year, a year now, a little bit more than a year now. Um, I came from uh, another company, a practice company. Um, I was a pretty big producer there. Um, I didn't really know anything about insurance back then, but I really did, did need to make it. Uh, so I just took what I had, learned what I could and went to work and, and you know, moved fast and broke things like Sean says. And I think that's the best recipe for anybody that really wants to make it into, into this business. The biggest thing for, for me when I, I think about the insurance industry in general is the fact that nobody, nobody grows up wanting to be an insurance agent. There's no such thing. It's not like, you know, being a fireman, being a police officer or being, you know, nobody wants to be an insurance agent. You end up being an insurance agent or an underwriter, whatever you want to call yourself, you know, because you need to get into something that is possibly going to change your life. And that's what happened to me. Uh, you know, I actually, I was a big actress in Brazil, a uh, child actress since I was seven years old. I always wanted to be an actor uh, and a, a director. And I came to the States to go to film school. And then I ended up meeting my ex-husband. We built a monster business. I, I've built several multi-million dollar businesses. I became a serial entrepreneur. And with that, um, I basically, you know, have done a lot in my life. But at some point, one of those businesses, after I got a divorce, uh, went down when I found myself in a situation that I needed to feed my family and I needed to uh, unbury myself out of $500,000 in debt. And um, that's when I found the insurance industry. And I think that's how most people find the insurance industry because yeah, you can be, you can, you can be very, uh, you can do very well financially, but it is not easy. And that's the thing that um, a new agents really truly need to understand is the fact that it's not easy. It is a lot of hard work. Uh, it's simple, but it's not easy. So I feel like for you to make it big here, there needs to be a greater motivated motivator. I feel like you have to have a strong why and that, that will get you through those tough days that will get through you through sitting in the shower and, and crying for an hour and a half after a long day of no shows or, you know, no closes and such. It, it, you have to have a strong why. And for me, that's what happened. I had a strong why. I was getting out of a divorce. Um, uh, at the time, I was going through absolutely insane things when it comes to, you know, mindset, mentally, financially. 
And my husband and I, my husband used to be a structural engineer in Canada. He's from Montreal. And be before living in Miami, I used to live in LA. I was a CEO. We started looking for jobs and then we found the insurance industry. And um, I became a top producer at that company, you know, um, number, of producer, number one producer in the company within like two months or so. And that's when, thank God, it only took me three months to find the FFL because some people go through years until they yeah. can actually find it here. But yeah. uh, I think that was your case, right, Brendan? No, I, I didn't have have um, have any prior experience with the, with the insurance, which was I, I'm blessed that this is my first rodeo. You know? But I, I know exactly what you mean because we all yeah. you know we talk to agents all the time that have spent five, 10, 15 years you know with other you know with other companies prior to getting here. So I know I know what you mean. Yeah, I for me it was you know three months into the business, I think three or four months. That's when I met Andrew and, uh, you know, I sat with Andrew, he, Nicole was there, the baby was there, and then Atlas uh, recruited me. <laughs> and um, I, 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 was in, I was in California, I was in LA, I used to live in LA in Miami, and then I called my husband, my husband was in Montreal at the time, and I said, we're moving to FFL. He's like, what is FFL? And I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter, we're moving to FFL. And then he's like, what do you mean? And he didn't like that very much, but he likes it now. He likes it and, now. Uh, that's how I end up here. Uh, for me, when it comes to, I feel like it was a lot easier. <laughs> it was a lot easier for me to not make excuses when I was nine months pregnant than it is now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because it's like, when you have, you really have your back against the wall and, and I knew that was going to happen. That's why like, I was like, I have to work really hard now. Uh, for me, uh, when I was seven, eight, nine months pregnant, I was in bed rest for several months and I couldn't work. So at the convention last year, what happened was I was like, okay, I'm sitting in this bed. I'm not working. I'm not making any money and I'm losing my mind and I know what I'm capable of. So when I got out of bed rest, I was like, I need to make this happen before this baby comes out of me. Cause I know when he comes out of me, I'm not going to want to work. Right. You know? So that's what I did. And I find myself right now, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to manage everything, right? When your agency is growing, keep up the, the production and such. And, you know, last month I protected 50 families and I was like, I should be doing more, but it's like, it's trying, it's trying to balance everything up. And right. I find myself right now going back to, you know, when I was seven, seven, eight, nine months pregnant and uh and i was like okay i gotta make this happen now because it's gonna get worse so for me it was like those three months because i i was in the field with the baby you know pregnant until a week before the baby was born it was like a, a ride or die you know mm -hmm. I, I gotta do it i gotta make it work i need to show people that it is possible being pregnant i i, I was sick before i mean i was in bed rest before but i wasn't bed rest at that point and it was it was really about showing myself what i was able to do what i was capable of and when you get to that point that you're like okay you know what i'm i want to do this i'm going to do this and i did do this now you know you're capable of anything right yeah um and and, and that's what's what I love about, you know, this process so much, the system here, it's like, if you just follow the system, once you prove it to yourself, you know, what you can do, it's like, there's no way to undo it, right? You know, you, you prove to yourself that you can go out and protect X amount of families. It's like, there's no way to undo it and, and, and believe that you can't do it anymore, right? Um, and so it's, it's just, you know, it's just a blessing, you know, to have, you know, a company like, F, you know, Family First Life here, you know, providing what it provides, you know, to us, you know, day in and day out. Um, and then following a leader like Sean, who works harder than anyone else, you know, that I know, you know, um, so it, it makes it very easy for, for us people like us, top producers to feel like we're not working hard enough right when you have a leader that works as hard as he works so um so i know i know exactly where you're coming from with that so so let's i know so the the no excuse just produce mentality you, you talked about just now you know having your back against the wall um is is, is that what you know what brings that fire out of you you know when, when you have your back against the wall knowing that you you know against all odds you have to go be successful for your family yeah, 100%. And it's hard to do that because when you get to that point that you are a top producer, 
you are issuing a bunch of business, things are going really well. It's very easy to get comfortable. Right. And I feel like I found myself at that point right now, like a couple months ago, I was like, you know, you know, we have money in the bank, things are good, everybody's happy, the, the, the agency is growing. So what do I have to do to make myself uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. uh, being comfortable, like, like finding yourself in a comfortable place is a great indicator. If you're comfortable, you have to do something to get out of that place because it's going to kill you. That's yeah. how you go down, go down real fast, real, real easy, you know? So yeah, for me, um, I, I work really well when I'm under pressure. Mm -hmm. It's a really weird thing. But yeah, if I'm under pressure, I will make it happen no matter what. And some of my biggest months, I was under pressure. And uh, so, so the question is, how do you put yourself in that situation, even when you are where you want it to be? Because the reality is, we should never be content with what we have. So even like, like I do, a lot of people know, I do my meditation every morning. I do the six phase meditation by Vishen Lakhiani, where it makes you visualize where you want to be three years from now. And when I started in this industry, I was going through such a crazy emotional time. And I really strongly believe that that meditation changed my life. Uh, I was going through a bad divorce, a custody battle, a, a lot of things. And every morning when I woke up, I would do this meditation. I would visualize where I wanted to be three years from now. I would visualize the life, the house I wanted to live. I would visualize the backyards. I would visualize my cars. I would visualize my office. I would visualize my bank account. And today, at less than two years from when I started in the industry in general, not FFL, mm -hmm. I have a lot of those things that I visualize that I would have three years ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. So now my visual visualization today has to be a lot more than what it was two years ago, because I already have a lot of those things. So the reality is you have to understand that if you you want to get to a happy place, that happy place, it needs to keep growing and evolving because otherwise you're going to get stuck at some point. So for me, it really is about putting my back against the wall. And you know what? Two years ago, putting my back against the wall was just like putting food on the table. Today, putting my gas by my back against the wall is renting an office that's gonna cost me fifteen thousand dollars a month. You know, whatever it is, you know, because I I I need to be evolving and I need to put myself in that situation. So so I think that. For any entrepreneur, and I, I talk about that uh, with a lot of experience under my belt, I've built businesses um, since I was 20 years old and I'm 34 so for 14 years. Uh, any entrepreneur, you have to find your uncomfortable place. That is the key. If you are uncomfortable, it, you are growing. If you are comfortable, you are it, it's stagnant and you never want to be stagnant as an entrepreneur. And and, and just because like you said, you um you can lose it, you can lose it at any time. It could start going the other way by just by just by you being, you know, and being, it happens uh, real fast. It happens yeah. real fast. It, it it does. So um so let's talk about um your let us let us what does a day in the life of Vivian look like? You know, um, you know, what you can share with us, you know, you talk, I know you talked about your meditation you know, and all of that. Stuff. So you're getting up early, you're getting your mind right, you know, um, for your day. Because um, I know it's a lot different now, say from a year ago when you were, you know, when you were producing, 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 now you're producing and you're building, you know, this massive agency at the same time. So um, what, what does the day look like in, you know, at this time for you? Yeah, so for me, um, I mean, it depends how my week is going. Uh, for me, to be honest, the person building the agency is Adriana more than anything. Uh, I, I train the agents and I work, you know, I do a lot of hands-on training and, and following up and making sure that my, my agents are growing and finding success. But building, really building the agency, I'm not going to take the credit for that because the builder is Adriana. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I would never in a million years be able to have uh, an agency uh, if it wasn't for my husband. I wouldn't. I would literally just be producing it. It is a hard balance to find. Mind and, uh, um, and 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 he is it right. So, but for me, um, my day is um, I I've struggled for the longest of times to be able to wake up early. 
for a very long time. I think that's the biggest struggle that most people get when they come into this industry because you require a lot of time, a lot of hours during the week to be able to accomplish what we are able to accomplish with Family First, right? right. So the, I've struggled for a very long time and I still do because I like to sleep in, I like to snuggle, I like, you know, like, I like to just like, you know, being back with my husband. And, and so so it's, it's a big struggle, but the moment that we were able to to really understand that waking up early and that really came from from Sean's leadership we're like okay this guy he owns family first he, he he's yeah he's very successful he makes a lot of money and he was he, he's waking up at 3 30 3 o'clock in the morning yeah. you know what that's pathetic of me even not waking up at five at least Right. So um, that, that's something that really comes from leadership. But, you know, Adriel and I, we try waking up every day at five. Um, the first thing I do, and that's key when it comes to medication, is before I even go to the bathroom, before I go pee, before I look at my phone, especially before you look at your phone, you do not want to look at your phones, open your emails, open your tax messages, get any negativity into your life before you clear your mind and you get your mind ready for the day, right? So before anything, I literally pick up my phone. I go on YouTube and I put the six phase meditation by Vishen Lakiani. There are several of them out there because he has several different versions, but you know, whatever I've, I've listened to every single one of them, it's all the same, it's just different way that he does it. Um, pick whatever you like the best. And then I put it on and I just literally for 20 minutes, I do the meditation. It's a guided meditation. So basically he goes through every separate different section of it. Um, and it, it's meant to rewire your brain so you can start being grateful for what you have. You can start visualizing where you want to be. You can start forgiving and forgetting things and people that really are holding you back. Mm. Um, and it, it, it's, it's, it's incredible. So I do my meditation. After that, I basically, you know, I, I hop in the shower. Um, I am not going to tell you that I'm a big workout person. I am not. I mean, I told my husband that tomorrow we're going, I'm, I'm dragging him to the gym. We're going to the gym over here. And okay. that's something that I need to start doing. I'm 34 years old. I can't be acting like I'm 25 anymore, right? And when I was young, I used to work out like crazy, but I'm not anymore. So I'm not. So yeah. I, I will hop in the shower. I'll get ready for the day. Usually we go to the office. If I, if I, if I, it's a dial that I'm dialing, I'm going to hop on the dial team and I dial, you know, as long as I need to, depending okay. on how my day is going. And sometimes I'm done by noon. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer if I don't have enough fleet and such. Okay. So dial day, I'm dialing. Sometimes um, I'm not running the entire week. Sometimes I only run two days a week. So the other dial day, I'm doing strategy sessions all day with my, with my agents. Um, running days, I'm either on the field or I am doing virtual. So the way that I work right now, I do a, a, a hybrid schedule. Uh, I usually uh, either dial um, or I'm doing strategy sessions. So if I'm doing a full uh, a full time schedule, Monday and Thursdays I'm dialing. Okay. Uh, Tuesday and Friday I'm doing uh, Zoom appointments. Okay. And in home appointments on Wednesday and Saturdays. Now, if okay. I'm doing just half a week, I will usually do just one of those. So I will either dial on Monday and run Tuesday and Wednesday, or I will dial on Thursday and run, you know, Friday and Saturday. That's usually whenever I have an event, I have to travel somewhere, or, you know, I have something going on and I can't run the entire week. You know, as we are growing, it happens. I'm not able to yeah. run as much anymore. So I have to adjust as I go. Uh, I'm getting ready to go back full time now. So hopefully I get back to where I need to be. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of like how my schedule is. And I try staying as consistent as I can. And I understand that consistency is very hard, but it's the key to being successful. So no, the moment that, 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 that uh, I, I'm not consistent anymore, I start going down real fast. And then I'm like, hold on, Vivian, wake up. You got to go back to your consistency because that's the key. Okay. So, so you're more like, like 50, 50 right now in, ter in terms of uh, virtual and field. Um, I'm so always 50, 50. Yeah. I don't ever run in the field two days uh, in a row and I don't ever do virtual two days in a row just because it starts getting to my mindset. Like I've done, I, I had a, a month that I protected 107 families all in person. 
And then I had another month, like I think right after that I protected 104 families, all virtual. So I proved to myself that I can do anything I want. I can protect 100 families virtual, which I didn't think it was possible to be honest. Before I did it, I didn't think it was possible. Right. I, thought, oh, I have to go to the field to do everything. I can do it all virtual. I can do it all in home. But the thing is, with my schedule right now, it's very hard to be out of the office for so long. And um, I, I start getting burnt out with the whole driving. And then when I'm doing all virtual, I have to, you know this, you have to double your activity. You have to double your appointments. You get a lot more no-shows and that starts getting to my head. So for me, I found out that what works, it, and each person is different, Brendan. Some people are going to have, you know, uh, want to do all virtual. Some people want to do all in person. Some people want to do a hybrid. But for me, I found that the best recipe is to one day in home, one day virtual, one day home, one day virtual. That way I have a little bit of everything that I like that works for me. I still get the results I'm looking for. And at the end of the day, it's balanced. I'm not burning anything that gets me to a point that I'm like, okay, I need to take three weeks off because I'm so exhausted. You know? Yeah. And, and, and I think, I, I'm I'm learning a lot right now because, like as you say, you know I, I've pretty much been full virtual, you know, for the last four or five, but about four months, at least three four months, I've been all virtual, and I and I know exactly what you're talking about because I think uh, Saturday was one of those days where I, I, my body just shut down on me, like um, I literally was I was in the bed by five o'clock Saturday. And I was in the yeah. bed for seventeen hours until that happened to me Friday, several times. It was, it was burnt out. And that's what got me to like, I got like, I had COVID in December. So in December, I was, I had, I had locked all these areas. I, I was getting crazy amount of leads coming in. Um, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to go really hard. I'm going to protect hundred families. And then what happened was I got COVID, my entire family got COVID and I got COVID and I was out for three weeks. And then I realized how burnt out I was. I had, I did protect 65 families in two weeks, you know, before that, but I got to the point that I was, I was sick and I was exhausted. And I was like, it's not because I'm exhausted because of the, of the, the, um, the activity but it was like it, I just didn't have a balanced schedule that worked for me so I could stay even minded kind of thing so so that's where I was like okay I need to take a step back and I need to figure out what works for me and I think that everybody needs to do that yeah. you if you're doing virtual you have to say you know what maybe I'll take one day a week get out of the house, see people, talk to people, remind myself why I'm doing this because virtual is amazing. But what I found about virtual is that virtual is a lot more about the money mm -hmm. than about the people. Yeah. And in person is more about the people than about the money. So the thing is, if for me personally, that's my take. If I'm able to find that, that, that um, happy medium, happy medium i get to have it all i'm not burning myself out i'm protecting as many people as i can and at the end of the day it's a long term uh, it's, it's something that i can sustain long term got you got right? you so yeah so i so I, i'm putting a check beside you know some of the things that i had already wrote down that i needed answered today so i appreciate that um let's talk about real quick um phone script because i, I do believe that you know that you have one of the one of the best phone scripts um you know in the in the company at this time as well um anything you would like to share you know about your phone script i mean would you like to role play it would you just like to you know share you know what you do why you do it yeah let's role play which one do you want to role play the virtual or the in home uh let's do uh which uh let's let's do virtual virtual okay hold on well, let me open my i know we have a lot of, i know we have a lot of new agents on the on the on on the call so and which the uh, majority of them start in home so let's let's do an in home uh phone script for um for whatever lead type you know you 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 want to do at this time okay in home then right yeah okay so i'm opening my phone script just so you guys know because the thing is no matter how good you are no matter how many times you have done this you always want to have your phone scripts in front of you. And, talk, and real quick, talk about your setup as well, because I remember last uh, last time we spoke, you talked about how how you have your setup on around your computer, you, you know, 
on the, on the wall, how you have your- um, Oh, I don't have it anymore, but- Well, start now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, start now. Talk about okay. that. Okay, so I'll tell you guys exactly where they're all my agents when it comes to phone script, when it comes to really mastering the phones. Uh, I mean, you know, you're gonna see me role playing my script. You're gonna think, oh my God, she's great. Guys, I hated the phones. I love the phones now. I don't have a problem with the phones now, but because I'm pretty good at it, but I hated the phones. It was one of the things that I hated the most was dialing. Uh, just so you understand a little bit why, when Adriano and I started in this industry, um, I was dialing 50 cent leads. Like I was dialing five to 10 year old mortgage protection needs. That means 15 contacts. You speak to 15 people, 15 people hang up on you, tell you to go to hell, curse on you, and ask why you're calling. It's very rude to you. 15 people for one appointment. That is like next time you get on the phones and you're dialing internet leads or you're dialing three month leads, think about this. Vivian Vile, he started in this industry dialing five to 10 year old mailers. So just so you understand what that means, somebody, see this mailer over here, somebody filled out this mailer five to 10 years ago. Right. Some of them are dead. Some of them do not, a lot of them don't live in the house anymore. They filled this out five to 10 years ago and I'm calling them trying to, to, to book an appointment for mortgage protection. So right. next time that you start thinking, oh, this is very hard to tell yourself, Vivian was dialing five to 10 year old leads. Right. And Vivian wrote $38,000 in her first month in the industry with a zero experience. So if I can do it, you can do it, right? Yeah. Uh, so the, what the keys to help me master my phone scripts, when you have to dial five to 10 year old leads, you have to become a master at it. Otherwise it's a disaster. You quit. It doesn't work. Right. So the first thing is you're going to take your script and I will drop my, the, the, can I drop something in the chat over here for my script? Uh, yes, please do. Okay. I'm going to drop the link to my script here. Uh, this is for my in-home script. You're gonna, you're gonna take this script and you're going to write it down seven times. Wow, but that sounds crazy, Vivian. What do you mean, write it down seven times? <laughs> what do you mean? Welcome to be an agent in my agency. <laughs> I, I make my agents write it down with a pen seven times, the entire script, and send me a picture of the seven pages or whatever, 21 pages, because I think each script, the script is three pages. I love that. Then the picture of all the, it's the script written down seven times. Why? Because if you don't know your script and you're dialing and then people are like, uh, I'm not interested. Or you start having a conversation with them and you're talking about whatever, your grandfather that passed away. And now you have to get back to the script because they gave you an objection. How are you gonna get back to the script? You have no idea where you are. Correct. But you can't not go through this by just like, oh, I'm gonna read the scripts. No, you need to know the scripts. Now, I know my script inside out. I can do my scripts for you a million times without reading it, but I always have my script in front of you. Why? Because I've built this script is specifically for conversion. I, for the last two years, I have dialed thousands of times probably tens of thousands of times. And every single time I optimize it is for something to make sure that's going to be better the next day. So yeah. I want to make sure that I am not missing anything in this script. I want to go through every single section, right? So I have it in front of you. So just in case I'm not missing anything, the way all of my agents have it set up, you write it down seven times. They're going to get the objection handling a book. They're going to write it down this, the rebuttal seven times. And then I have them get like colorful flashcards from from cvs walgreens or whatever walmart and they have to be colorful and they have to be different colors and then you're going to get the rebuttals from the objection handling book which i'm also going to drop here for you guys hold on man handling book you got to get getting a treat today what did this go objection handling book Did it? Yeah. So I'm going to drop this for you guys here. Um, copy. Okay. So you're going to take just the rebuttals part, guys. You're going to take the rebuttals 
And then you're going to put each rebuttal in one colorful flashcards and you're going to make a panel around your computer why is it around your computer why is it it's not just here a bunch of papers because you're not going to know what you're looking at you want to have it around your computer you want to have exactly which where each of ob, uh, rebuttal is so every time somebody says i'm not interested you know to go to the green and the green is in that corner if somebody says um i already got it taken care of you know to go to the red and it's on that corner if somebody says i already have somebody coming you know to go to the blue it's in right there on the top all you need to go is just move your eyes and you know exactly what it is and you don't have to guess what you're gonna do you don't have to stumble over your words all you need to do is just read the rebuttal because those are tested over and over and over again by top producers right so that's those are the main things write down your script seven times write down your rebuttal seven times make a panel my agents in some of the office they show up with this big big cardboard board panel and everybody's like what is wrong with these people well they sell a lot of insurance so you should do the same um so that's the first thing now do you want to role play the script brendan yes ma'am let's let's get to it okay so ring ring hello hi brendan yeah who this hi brendan this is vivian over here with the benefits office in miami dade county i'm giving you a call back here to let you know that I did receive that form that you had filled out and sent back to my office for the mortgage protection program. It's the one that covers your mortgage if you were to become sick or pass away. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, I think I got like 10 of them. Yeah, that, that happens. It's okay. I'm actually the field on the writer that was assigned to help you out. And I just need to verify a few things real quick so I can get this out to the correct address. You put your address here as 123 Main Street in Miami, Florida, 33137, is that right? Yep, that, that, is, that is my address. Perfect. And I have your date of birth as 3587, is that correct? Yep, that, that, that's, my, that's my date of birth. Okay, perfect. And I don't see here a co-borrower or a spouse name. So are you single, married, engaged? Do you have any sugar mamas? Uh, yes. So I do have my I do have my wife as well. Oh, so you do have a sugar mama. What's sugar mama's name? Her name is Teresa. Teresa, love it. How old is Teresa? Uh, she is 39. Perfect. 39. All right. Awesome. Like I said, Brandon, um, I am the senior underwriter that was assigned to help you out. Now, these plans, they are state approved programs. So what that means that there's no physical exams, they don't send a nurse, they don't make you pee in a cup, nothing crazy like that, really. All they really do is they send me out to verify your ID, Make sure you are not attached to a 500 pound oxygen tank. That's very important that you are alive and breathing and ask you about five minutes of health questions to find out what it is that you and Teresa are going to qualify for. Now, Brandon, are you and Teresa working or retired? Uh, working. We, we both work. You work. Okay. So do you typically work like a nine to five or an eight to four? Uh, more like a nine to five. I, uh, I usually get off about 530 and she gets off around 330. 530. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. And that's uh, okay. So he, the reason I'm asking is because it looks like they have me in your area in the next couple of days seeing everybody else that filled out this form. I just need to find a spot where I can fit you into my schedule. It's crazy right now. Because, you know, they have me running like a crazy person seeing 12 to 15 families a day. They think I'm superwoman or something, Brandon. It's nuts. But um, so my day tomorrow, let me see. Hmm. My day tomorrow is completely booked, Brandon. But you know what? I know this is important to you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to squeeze you and Teresa uh, in between my appointments. Let me see what I can do here. You know what? I can either do a, a 545-ish or a 
7.15 in the evening. Which one's best for you You both? I would probably say 7.15 because um, based on traffic and things, I usually get in a little bit after 6. So so probably 7.15 would definitely give give us better time to be to be home and be settled. Okay, perfect. All right, let me hold the 715 for you. Now, Brandon, this is my last spot at that time. So are you 100% positive this is going to work for you and Teresa together? Yes, yeah. I mean, there's no no reason why we both shouldn't shouldn't be there, you know, shouldn't be home at that time. Okay, perfect. I really I really appreciate that, Brandon, because you know, one missed appointment really takes away my chance to help somebody else that really needs this coverage. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, perfect. All right. So just so you know, Brandon, I have 15 other appointments on, on, on that day. And sometimes they may run a little bit late. So give me an hour window just to be safe. But I will not forget about you. I will be there between 7.15 in the evening uh, and 8.15 tomorrow. Okay? Okay. Uh, now, real quick, do you have a, a paper and pen handy so I can give you a few things to write down? I do. Okay, perfect. My name is Vivian, and my last name is W-E-Y-L-L. -L. Okay. My license number is W, as in whiskey, 628189. Okay. And I also need you to write down the day and time we agreed to meet on top of that paper. I'm coming to see you and Teresa um, tomorrow between 7.15 and 8.15 in the evening. Okay. One last question, Brandon. Is this address a house or an apartment? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a house. Okay. And is the address right up front or on the mailbox? I uh, think we have it it's by the door and on the curb. Okay, so if I put my address on, on your GPS, it's pretty easy to find? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, GPS will bring you right here. Okay, are there any gate calls or any large dogs that I need to be aware of that are gonna try eating me? No, no, we did just get a, 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 a puppy, a bulldog. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's just a puppy. Does, does he bite? Is yeah. it like that crazy he's a, puppy? He's a puppy, he's teething, you know, but uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So just so you know, Brandon, uh, um, I am a short Brazilian lady. I'm gonna be coming in the in the evening. So I want to make sure you know it's me when I pull up. I'm gonna be driving a white SUV. And please do me a favor and uh, let Teresa know I'm coming so she can put the shotgun away, okay? Okay, all right, I will. <laughs> Uh, okay, if that's everything I need from you. I'll see you and, you and Teresa tomorrow, Brandon, and you have a beautiful evening. All right, thank you. Look forward to it as well. All right, before we go to, I want your 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 pace, and and because I because I, I know a lot of new agents, you know, you want to get in this. They don't understand. They're like, well, why is she speaking like she's retarded? Tell, but it's it's, it's explain that though. The reason I'm speaking so slow is because it forces me to pay attention to what I am saying. Mm. You, you know what I'm saying? So here's the thing. Any new agent is going to take this script and it's going to do it like this. Hi, Brandon. This is Vivian over here with the Benefits Office in Miami-Dade County. I'm giving you a call back about the form that you had sent out to my office for the Mortgage Protection Program. It's the one that fills out the, that pays off your mortgage if you become sick or pass away. Does that ring a bell? And yeah. the first thing they're going to be, be like, no. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you sound like a telemarketer. And I am not a fan of saying I'm not a telemarketer. I'm a fan of showing I'm not a telemarketer. Because telemarketers, they speak high and fast. Yep. Underwriters speak low and slow, like a doctor. And this is something when I first started in this industry, I think I told you this, you know, uh, uh, somebody asked me, do you want to get paid like a doctor or you want to get paid like a telemarketer? And I said, like a doctor, better than a doctor. And then they said, they said, how do doctors talk? 
low and slow exactly so you have to talk like a doctor low and slow and the thing is the majority of the people i talk to first of all they are older and even if they are not older what happens is when you speak really slow really low you sound like somebody that works for the county and hates their job mm. and if you go to the county to get some paperwork and you're talking to the guy that works for the county and hates their job, you go at their pace. Yeah. You do what they tell you to do. Mm -hmm. They are in control. So that's it. You hate your job. You work for the county. You are at your own pace. And that forces people to listen to you because if you're going real fast, they assume you're a terrible marker or they are going to hang up on you. If it takes you... 25 seconds to go through the first paragraph, it's going to keep them on the phone for 25 yeah. seconds. And if it keeps them on the phone for 25 seconds, they're going to listen the words you're saying. They are going to know you're not a telemarketer. You are actually the underwriter that's trying to help them out with the request they sent in. Mm -hmm. So it's really the key of getting them to listen to you very slow, very low. And once that first paragraph is done, then you can mimic their tone. Mm. So if they speak fast, you can go in and speak like they do. If they speak slow, they're a little bit older, you go as low as they do. But the, the first paragraph, most of the new agents are going to be like, I don't understand. I can't even get to the first three lines. I'm like, okay, let's listen. And I'm like, well, you're speaking like a telemarketer. You don't need to tell them, hey, I'm not a telemarketer. Because if you call me and you tell me, hey, I'm not a telemarketer, the first thing I'm going to tell you, yeah, you are, boom, I'm going to hang up on you. <laughs> but if I act like I'm not a telemarketer, then it's a whole different, you know, um, uh, thing. That, that's basically why. I love and, that. And, and I don't know if you notice how many times did I, did I say Teresa? Yeah, it, about five times. A lot. Why? Yeah. Because you're making sure that we're talking about the person that. Because I'm making sure I'm not going to get a one legger. Right. There is nothing I hate the most more than one legger. I prefer getting no shows than getting a one legger. So for me, I had it, I had to introduce something in my script that I had. I said the name of the spouse so many times that they remember that the spouse needs to needs be to there. Be there. Right. And, and, and I think that one of the biggest mistakes in a lot of the scripts out there is that people don't um, emphasize the fact that they need the spouse there many times. So you need to have Teresa and you use the name of the spouse every single time. And then now it's more personal. If it's more personal, you, they know you care. If, if, you, if they know you care, they want you to help them. So my script, if you go through my script, it's meant to create a strong appointment right off the bat. From setting that appointment, my clients are usually at the door waiting for me. Why? Because I care, because yeah. I know their names, because I'm, I'm mimicking their tone. So I'm meeting them where they're at because I'm making sure I'm clearing their schedule and it's at that time that's comfortable for them, but it's meeting my schedule because I am extremely busy. But you know what? I am opening up my schedule to help you because I know that's important to you, right? right? So it's all about fitting you into my schedule because I am extremely busy, but it's also about serving your family. So if you have a strong script, if you have, if you're putting them first, and if you were extremely busy, that's the key. You have to be extremely busy. In the beginning, you might not be just yet, but when you get to the level that you're like me and Brendan, trust me, you are. It's hard to have, to put people into your schedule because you're so busy. So you want to make sure that you let them know that you are extremely, extremely busy. And, you know, you want to add some, some humor in there. You want to make them laugh. If they laugh, they will show. Correct. They shoot a mama. Ask them to put the shotgun away. You know, those are some of the things that are going to make it more personal and they're going to want to meet you because you were fun to be around. That's it. Man, I mean, that, that, was, that was just straight fire, you know, every, everything going, going through that script. I, I really love, love the pace and the hoping that, you know, people are taking, taking, um, paying attention to that because um, very mundane, very low and slow, and 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 keeping your your pace and your pitch right um let's i know time is let's let's jump into would you mind going through the the virtual script 
real quick? I see we're getting a lot of uh, comments about the virtual script. Yeah. My virtual script, script is very, very, very similar. Uh, and a few differences. I'll just go through it real quick. Um, so um, basically, I would do the exact same thing. Uh, I'll go through it really quick with you. So let's just role play. Okay. Um, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Brendan. Yes, yes. Who is this? Hi, Brendan. This is Vivian over here with the benefits office in Miami-Dade County. I'm giving you a call back here to let you know that I did receive that form that you had filled out and sent back to my office for the mortgage protection program, which is that plan that covers your mortgage if you were to become sick or pass away. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, it, it does. I think my wife maybe filled it out, but it does. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I'm the senior underwriter that was assigned to help you out. And I just have to verify a few things real quick to make sure we get these options out to you. You put your address down here as 123 Main Street. Is that right? That is correct. Perfect. And I have your date of birth as May 3rd, 1987. Is that right? Correct. Awesome. Now, Brandon, um, I don't have um, significant other spouse or co-borrower here. So are you single, married, engaged? Do you have any sugar mamas? <laughs> yeah, I do have my wife. She is my sugar mama, yes. So you do have a sugar mama. Okay, what's sugar mama's name? Teresa. Teresa. And how old is Teresa? Uh, she's 39. 39. Okay, perfect. Just so I have an idea what you might qualify for, Brandon. Um, do you know if that's a 30 year mortgage or less? Uh, we did 30. 30. Okay. And do you know how much are you paying per month? I think about 1450. 1450. And uh, God forbid something happened to you, who would be your beneficiary? Would that be Teresa? Uh, definitely uh, Teresa. Okay. Kids. You have any kids? Yeah, we, we do have six. Okay, how many kids? Six. Six? Oh, wow. Oh, okay. God bless you, Brandon. Six kids. Okay. Um, okay, awesome. And just so I have an idea of what you and Teresa are going to qualify for, um, do you guys have any health conditions at, the, at this time? No, I'm pretty, pretty fairly healthy. And you know, I've had some back, some back issues, you know, in the past. Um, and some pain medications for that about five years okay. ago. But other than five that, years. Yeah. okay. Are you currently taking any medications right now? No medications right now. What about for Teresa? Uh, same for her, no medication. Okay. And what about in the past? Which medications did you take five years ago for your back? Uh, like Tamalosin, I think, uh, for pain. Okay. All right. And any other medications for any other conditions that you've had that you don't have anymore? Uh, no, nothing other than maybe like pain meds for like, uh, dentist appointments, you know, stuff like that. Okay. Got it. No history of heart attack, stents, cancer, any COVID that you hospitalized for? No, we, we've actually been blessed through this COVID situation. Uh, no COVID awesome. in our hospital. Okay. And do you and Teresa smoke at all? Use any tobacco? No, ma'am. Okay. Perfect. All right. That's all I needed. Like I said, I'm the senior underwriter that was assigned to help you out. And these plans, there are state approved programs. So there are no physical exams or anything like that. You know, they don't send any nurses. They don't make you pee in a cup or nothing like that. All they really do is they sent me out to verify your ID, make sure you are not attached to a 500 pound oxygen tank. That's very important that you are alive and breathing and ask you about five minutes of health questions to find out what it is you're going to qualify for. Now, Brandon, typically I'm out in the community dropping off options to families. However, because of everything that's going on with COVID and all, we are allowed to take care of families by virtual meetings instead. Are you familiar with Zoom, Brandon? Uh, yeah, we pretty much use it for work every day. 
Oh, perfect. Yeah, so we'll be able to see each other on the computer and I can share my screen with you and, view, and you guys are going to be able to view your options and I will answer any questions you may have. So basically, I do have a ton, I have tons of families requesting these options right now. So uh, this option right now. So let's find a 15 to 20 minute window where I can have you and Teresa in front of the computer together. Um, are you guys working or retired, Brandon? Uh, working. Working. And do you typically work like a nine to five or an eight to four? Uh, it's typically more like a nine to five. Um, I think you know, she works from home, um, but uh, I'm, I'm out and I, I usually get home around about 5 30, 6 o'clock. 5 30. Okay. So give me one second. Let me just see what I have available here. It's crazy right now because, you know, they have me running like a crazy person, seeing like 15 to 20 families a day. Um, they think I'm superwoman or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on. Give me one second. Let me see. Hmm. My day is completely full tonight, but you know what, Brenda, I know this is important for you and the reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze you guys in between my appointments. So I'm going to put, I can put you in either at like 545 or at 715, which one would be best for you? Probably the 715, 545 you know, maybe pushing it for me to, you know, make it in. Um, and I would like to, you know, at least get in and maybe eat before we do this. So 715 probably work best. Okay, 715 it is. All right. So let me hold the 715 for you. And this is my last spot at that time. So are you 100% positive you and Teresa are going to be home at that time? Uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, barring anything coming up with the kids, you know, we should, we definitely should be there. Okay, perfect. All right. I really appreciate that because, you know, one missed appointment really takes away my chance to help somebody else and needs this coverage. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. Okay. Can you grab a pen and paper real quick? I'm going to give you a few things to write down. Okay. So the first thing I need you to write down is um, my name, Vivian, and my last name is W-E-Y-L-L. -L. Okay. And my state license number, you know, my dad wanted me to be a doctor, but I ended up becoming a medical underwriter. So I had to be licensed for that. Um, and that is W628189. Okay. You can go into the financial services website by the state, put that number in, and you're going to be able to look me up, get my address. If you want to stop by for coffee and all, you know where to find me. You're going to have that in there. Okay. Um, the next thing I need you uh, to have for me at our meeting is going to be your driver's license. I need to make sure you are the right person I'm giving the options to. So have that for you and Teresa, please readily available. Um, the next thing is medications. Um, you said that you do not take any medications right now, but if for whatever reason, you know, you remember something, please have that for me. I might need some information on that. Okay. Um, and uh, the last thing I want you to write down is the day and the time we'll reach meet. We're meeting tomorrow uh, at 7.15 in the evening, Eastern. Okay. And what's the best email for me to send you the link for, for the Zoom, Brandon? Uh, email would be uh, kitchensfamily at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. So I'm putting this in here. Excuse me. That's what happens when you have, you know... You're working too hard. Um, uh, I'm going to put this in here. You're going to get um, uh, an email and a text message right now. And um, um, that should be all I need. And um, Brandon, do me a favor. Would you do me a huge favor? Uh, yeah, what is it? Would you stick that piece of paper on your fridge and put me on your calendar? I really don't want you to forget about me. Okay. Uh, I, yes, I'll make sure that she gets it. She runs, you know, takes care of everything, make sure that we're on time for all appointments for kids and everything. I, I got that feeling that Teresa's the boss. Okay, I like her already. <laughs> okay, you're going to receive an email, a text message. You're going to be able to join either from your phone or your computer five minutes before our meeting time. You just click on the link or your computer and it's going to open the meeting. As a reminder, I do have a lot of homeowners to help this weekend and I want to make sure that I get to everybody. So please give me a few minutes of wiggle room in case I'm running behind. Sounds good? It sounds good. Okay, and make sure to let Teresa know we're meeting each other on the screen so she can brush her hair or something, okay? She... Okay. All right, awesome. It will be presentable. 
Perfect. Uh, it was great speaking with you, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. All right. Thank you. You know what? Uh, what I really love. We went through both scripts, and and it's really what's sinking in for me is something that Stephen always always told me very early was, you know, your script, whether it's your in home, whether it's your phone presentation, your phone script, it, it should it should be like a Broadway play, like regardless of the audience, the play is the same. Right. If yeah. whether we go see cats today or we go see cats six months from now, still gonna see cats, right? You know, it's not gonna be a different play, right? And and that's what I'm loving about, about what we just went through on both ends. It was pretty much the same. You just made certain tweaks to the virtual that you don't do on the on the in-home, but it's pretty much the same thing um, over and over again. And, and that's why you're getting the results that you're getting because you're just sticking to the script day in and day out and not and not veering away from it. So man, I, I, I hope, you know, I see we're getting, you know, a lot of uh, re remarks um, here, you know, um, fire emojis because it is fire, you know, um, to just be able to just stay dialed in like that. So I know, one last thing I do want to talk about real quick, because I, I think what a lot of new agents do struggle with here is the fact of um, the the leads. So, are you are you you know working with leads? Or are you working with a warm market every day? Because I mean I know no, the answer. I don't work nothing with warm market. The last thing I'm ever gonna do in my life is bother my family and family for anything. Like my my friends and family, they have to chase me to write insurance on them. Right. <laughs> I am a lead girl. I like we've hired so many people right now that came from a company that all they do is referrals and more markets. Don't get me wrong. I, I I think it's amazing. Like there are some people that have an ability of collecting referrals and wow, yes. I need to master that so I can double my business. Right. And every time you know I go there, I collect some referrals. But I if there was not leads, I would not be in this industry. I wouldn't because I am not the type of person that will be calling people say, hey, do you need some insurance? Like, you know, my friends and family and stuff. No, I will call anybody that requested that coverage and I will come and I'll help them out. So I work with leads. I run, um, I mean, I will run anything really if I need it. So I have a lot of mortgage protection mailers locked out. But if I don't have enough mailers that week, I'll hop on the CRM and I'll get the age mailers. The one month, two months, and three plus months. I love those leads. They are like the best ROI you can possibly have there's nothing like it and, and i'll tell you because i because i, I do i do uh, and you you probably know this when yeah. you do you know virtual you need a lot more leads so what happens is that a lot of these leads you don't even get to them you can't get in touch with them you can't talk to them you, they don't know show you and what happens is five weeks four weeks later i paid eighty dollars for that lead now they're in the crm for nine dollars and I haven't even been able to touch them yet because right. I have so many leads coming in. So for a newer agent and even, even for an older agent, like grabbing those leads are vital to really like fill up whatever you have going on or, um, you know, for you to bring your cost per, you know, acquisition Damn. down. Right? Yeah. Because I'm paying $80 on this lead and then paying $9 on this lead. If I close both, I just spent $89 and then you get that total AP and you divide and it's like, it's, it's a much lower cost per acquisition. So at the end of the day, it's a great way. The CRM leads are a great way to really uh, uh, lower your marketing costs and it still allow you to produce at a high level. Uh, now I have agents that only run mortgage protection mailers age from the CRM. They're like, why am I going to spend 80 bucks? I mean, the majority of you lazy asses, you don't even right. work your, your leads properly. I'm going to work them when you're done, you're not done with it. And right. I'm like, and yeah, it's it almost 10 times less expensive to get a one month. And then, you know, to be, on, to be honest, you're going to book, like I had one of my agents send me a text, uh, text the other day. She's like, these, um, uh, one, one, two, and three month leads from the CRM, the mortgage protection. I, I did nine dials. I booked three appointments. I'm like, you go, girl. That's amazing. And right. so I really think that, um, I mean, when, it, when you have a very, 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 very low budget, when I started in the industry, I didn't have access to that stuff. 
I only had access to 57 leads, which were like amazing. And it was crazy. Right. So much work. But you know what? You do what you got to do. Um, but the fact that you have access to one month, two months, three months, the internet leads. Now, if I don't have enough uh, uh, mortgage, I will grab uh, final expense mailers. I will grab internet leads. I'll work whatever I have to, to, to meet the production that I'm looking for for that week. Wow. And, 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 and just, I just, want, I just want to stick on this just for one, one second because I, I, I think it's so vital to, to new agents' success in the beginning in terms of their mental and, and understanding the opportunity that they have because, you know, we talk about, you know, someone like yourself, you started on 50-cent leads, five 10-year-old mortgage leads. When I started, it was, the, it was the same thing. You know, Stephen was sending me, you know, three, four, five, six-year-old mortgage protection leads, you know, thousands of them and I would sit down and just dial my fingers off with you know with no phone burner no type of you know system to help me dial just manually dialing my fingers off to the to the bone you know to book me you know five or six solid appointments that I could then just go out there and help those families and 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 make make some money so I could then start to invest into better leads for myself right so and and I think a lot of you know you know agents they come in and then you know and we tell them hey get these leads and then they're like what well, you know they're, they're open. I'm like you just don't know like you, you know you just don't un, you know understand the opportunity that you actually do you're working on lead as one month two months three months old when people like us started on leads that were years old right so yeah. just real quick talk about you know the mind state and where and 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 what that does I mean. <laughs> I look at something like call tools these days, <laughs> phone burner, and I have a flyer. And it's like, guys, you guys can do a thousand dials and you don't have to actually do it. Like when we started Adrian and I, it was him and I dialing 50 cent leads. And uh, we had to actually that we were doing 750 dials each right. a day. And sometimes we would end up the day with three appointments. And they're like, oh my God, we got three appointments. Yes, let's do right. it again tomorrow. Good day. <laughs> right. You know? Good day. And and the, and the thing I th I feel like that's the, the biggest thing that new agents don't understand. So people come to convention and they see all these podcasts and 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 they say, oh my God, look at that, Viv. She just protected a hundred families. She's very successful. She makes all this money. She has all this recognition. But they think that I do that by just sitting around and not working. Like, like we had to go through a lot, Brandon, to be able to get to the level that we can teach other people to do that as well. And the, the good thing about this industry is that you can go through a lot in a year or two. It doesn't need to take 15 years, you know? Yeah. It was only two years ago when I started, but thank God it's such a, like a high impact and high, like it's, it's such a fast uh, industry that we get to learn very fast, right? What you would have to go, like what I use, that, that's one of the things I usually say, for you to learn to be an attorney, you have to go to school for six years and then you have to go to work for an attorney's office for another three and then maybe you're going to be you know making decent money you know good money right. you know here you can come in in three months you can be making what an attorney makes and uh after nine years doing all of it but the thing is you're going to have the work ethic that that attorney had yeah. to have over nine years you have to have it in three months Correct. You can have work ethic of, you know, a hundred thousand dollar a year job thinking that you're going to make five times that. So the point is, um, Jordan Larry, we were on a call once and he said, I asked somebody if I could teach you how to make this much money, what would you be willing to do? And the person said anything. And that's the, uh, that's the mindset that somebody needs to have. Right. This business, this industry is life changing, but you have to keep a few things in mind. Most people don't make it. Nope. Most people come in here and quit on their first week. If not, you know, if they're really good, they quit in the first three months. You know how many people you put in HCMS? Yes. How many people are actual writers? 
Most people will not make it. Why? Because it requires a lot. It requires a very specific work ethic. It requires grit. It requires will. It requires being, being willing to do what it takes. And most people are not willing to do what it takes. Nope. Right? So the thing is, I went through crazy stuff to be able to get, to be good on the phones like I am today. I used to despise the phones. I did. Today, I'll sit down, I'll die all day. People are going to tell me, go to hell. And I'm like, sir, okay, you have a good day. Yeah, and then I go back to the next one. And you know what? I don't let even affect me anymore. But the thing is, you cannot get to that level without going through the first six months in the industry, guys. I used to sit in the shower. It didn't matter if I helped 20 families that day, in one day. I would get home, I would sit down in the shower on the floor, the shower had to be on the floor, and I would cry for two hours. Mm. Because it was that emotionally pulling on me. Right. You know? it, 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 like For me to get out that day and protect 20 families, it took me and my husband dialing for 16 hours right. and getting cars on the phone for 16 hours. And out of those 16 hours, each one of us dialing, we booked three appointments each. And then I went out there and then I fought for those people because they couldn't see it. It was hard for them to see it that they need it. And I had to go over and over and over the rebuttals and the objections until I could help them understand how important it was because I don't want them to go through what I went through. Right. right. And then after I got home and I was very successful, it was a day that, you know, I protected 20 families. First day I've ever protected 20 families in one day. I sat down in that shower and I cried for an hour and a half mm. because it was just so much. You know what? I'm successful. I made money. I had success. I should be happy. I was happy, but I was also exhausted. exhausted. And you know what? I cried and I got it all out of me and I went, went right back to it. Do you know what it takes to do that? It takes a lot. And the thing is, everybody wants to be on stage in convention. Everybody wants to be talking on the podcast. Everybody wants to have the money. Everybody wants to have the recognition. The question is, are you willing to do what it takes? Correct. And that's the thing that I, I feel like people don't understand. It does not matter if you come here and you buy $80 mailers. You're going to buy 10 $80 mailers. You're going to spend $800. You're going to book one because you don't know how to do it. And then you're going to quit too. But yep. then you come here and you buy $800 and you buy 100 internet leads. And then you booked, uh, book a bunch. You don't find success immediately and you quit too. Yep. Why? Because the work ethic is not there. So it comes down to work ethic. And if you can't find in yourself to tell yourself, this is not easy. You can have the income of an attorney after nine years being an attorney and having $500,000 in that. Right. And you have the type of success that it takes nine years to an attorney or a doctor to do. It's going to take the work ethic of going through 10 years of school within three months. Can you do it? Yes, you can do it. The question is, will you do it? Then that's up to you. Hey, and and I think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end on that note because you about to get have me crying. I mean, just thinking about you know the, all the days in the field for me. You know, I I've, I've never broken down in the shower and cried, but but I have. Oh, I, for but the first I, six months in the industry, if this is everybody knows this. First six months in the industry, every day I got home, and I and some of people that know me, I have a very strong why, and I used to to tell a lot of my aid, my clients about my why. And that was very tolling emotionally. Every day I would get home from the field for the first six months in the industry, I would cry in the shower every day. Yeah. Oh, oh and, and like I said, I feel your pain. Like I've never broken down in the shower and cried, but I have come home and, and, had, and had Teresa hold me. Yeah. Hold me. <laughs> <laughs> like for real, I've, I've had her hold me and caress, and caress me. And, and I'm like, because because again it's it's so mentally again like when you're pouring your all into trying to help these families like it takes so much from you and then to still gotta you know have have enough for my wife and my kids and oh and 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 my grandkids and and everything else man it, it is a lot so man just i think we're gonna you know leave leave there because that's that's just so powerful but it, it goes back to what i always say that the results that you see here at Family First Life, the results that you see top producers, you know, get like yourself, like me, those results are earned. They're not given. 
they're not given. We go out and earn those results. You know, you know, we put the work in, we, we make the sacrifices, you know, we make the commitment, we stay disciplined to be able to get to those results. Res result. And every person can do it as, as, um, as well, if you really want to do it. And if you and if you have a big enough why on why you need to do it, you know, like, like, I need to do it. I got weddings to pay for. I got kids that that are dependent on me. So I'm I'm going. I'm willing to go through whatever it takes to get my family to that next level. And 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 the same for you. So, hey, and and anyone that's out there, you're watching this call. You can do the same for yourself and your family also, if you really want to. You know what it takes. Um, we're here to help. Vivian, thank you so much for just pouring everything out today. You know, you're you're a blessing to this company. You're a blessing to just every everyone that encounters you. Um, you even closed me. I gotta if I'm gonna be buying a new ring at some point here. Oh, oh, Brandon's getting the recent new ring. We're making that happen. I forgot about that one, Brandon. Right? I'm calling you after this call. <laughs> yes, you know, so um but I have mine today, huh? <laughs> But, you know, but again, man, we just appreciate you so much. And, you know, from, you know, from Steven, I know he really wanted to, um, to do this call with you today. Um, just had some, some technical difficulties. Um, thank you, Steven, for the opportunity for allowing me to spend this time with Vivian. Vivian, thank you uh, from uh, Family First Life Sky Point. We appreciate you. Um, anything you need, let us know. We're here to help you as well. Hey, hey guys, let's get out here and let's finish this week out. Go help some more families. We got two more days in this week um, to to help as many families as we can. Um, let's let's make it a good a great one. You know, Sky Points the half the high point. Stay Thank blessed. you so much for having me. Bye, guys. Have an awesome week.